apocalypse, Mr. Mankind. Who are you? Your new lord and master. You may call me Dark Side. Huddle up, B-Ball Bemmers, and watch me do a slam dunk of an opening. You're listening to the Dark Side's Couch. I'm Mike. Uh, this is James. I'm Shay. That was great, like that. Mike. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what happens when you put the pressure on. Mm-hmm. That like was nothing but net. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's the swish. As, a, <laughs> as we've learned, we learned from this book, the biggest thing you can do in basketball is the swish. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in the country, right? Speaking mm-hmm. of swish. Mm-hmm. And swish. Uh, so because you grew up in the country, there's not the best dental hygiene. So mm-hmm, growing mm-hmm. up in school, sometimes they would pass around a cup of gross tasting liquid and you had to swish it around in your mouth and spit it back out. And then the school nurse would take it all the dirty swish away. And it was called why, swish. This, why does this sound? I don't think I ever did this, but you say that and something clicks in my brain and I feel why, like wait, I did I, do it. I, that, uh, what? Yeah. Is I, that a, does that not make sense? They no. Would make us, they would make us like rinse our mouths out at school because they were afraid we weren't doing it at home. I I just okay. So like in a communal, like a trough. Like no, pigs, we would. Like there would be like a tray. Then the school nurse would pass out, pass around right. these cups with swish, and they would just interrupt our day with swish. Oh, but we weren't. You weren't all swishing into the same cup. No, that, that would be some. Bucket? That would be some Viking shit. That would be Is like from, swish a brand. <laughs> I don't I know. S- it was just called Swish because you swished it in your mouth. It could have been like mind control fluoride right. to like brainwash the kids before the net, the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah, because if you had well water or something, you probably didn't have fluoride. So it, that's an option. But I'm wondering if it was just mouthwash. So most of us had, I've had mouthwash as an adult. That was not mouthwash. Okay. It was like drinking pond water. I, this sounds it familiar. Like. I think I've heard of this. Are you and, sure you weren't part of MK Ultra? So I mean, I was one of the original Ritalin kids. Like uh, I was one of the first couple generations of that experiment of giving mm-hmm. kids Ritalin, and then they mm-hmm. stopped doing it because of, of you. Because of me. I was yeah, I was one of the the test kids. Where's my money for that? The drug companies owe me money for that shit. I should sue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you'll probably win. That's not that hard of a thing to do. You think I should? No, no, because you'll get you'll get crushed. You would get absolutely destroyed. What if all I had to do was just like say, hey, they gave me Ritalin and Dexedrine and Adderall all throughout my childhood, and I would just talk to the judge. There might be a class action. What do you think the judge is going? No, I, I'll just talk. To, I'll just you. have a stream of consciousness in front of that judge, and he'd be like, oh man, that fucked you up. Yeah, and then he'll take out his bong, and you just kind of like kick back a little bit. Like, what, what do you think? This isn't a jam sesh with the judge. I mean, isn't that what they do to, to test to see if a drug, like a brain drug ruined you? Uh, have you just babble nonsensically to a, to a judge? Or just talk to him how I normally talk to everybody. I don't know, man. I think your, legal, your understanding of the legal system might be slightly flawed in this. Well, I, they gave me brain drugs as a kid, James, and made me swish, and mm-hmm, the, which mm-hmm. destroyed my ability to think clearly. Uh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Let's go. I'll be your lawyer. I don't care. No offense, Mike, but I think there were a lot worse things going on at your school. Uh, not my, Well, I wasn't there for that. I wasn't there for the Dennis Hastert the, years. The shock waves were still felt. I didn't even know about it until he went to jail for it. Yeah, they're not going to, like, you know, not going to put it in the school paper. <laughs> I mean, that's big news, like, though. The reporters <laughs> who went to, who worked at my school paper were garbage. Yeah. I would have had jokes. The entire time. Also, that means that you weren't involved. I would be roasting my teachers for knowing about it, not doing anything about it. <laughs> it would be pretty controversial. They would have to write about it in the school newspaper. Yeah. You know, speaking of gross things, uh, Shay last time uh, told me I can't make the gross wet splat sound anymore. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, and I, I said, well, I'm just going to come back with even grosser sounds this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Shay actually said that was fine. So I, I don't have the wet sound. I do have, let's see what I've got instead. I've got, I've got queued up maybe some like oozy slimy sounds. That's got to sound good in your ear, right? Oh my God. Yeah. That's a fun sound. How do you ah, feel about that, Shay? Dude. Better can, than the huh? other sound? Shay, yeah. you won't feel that way if I tell you what that sound sounds like to me. <laughs> How about this classic? <laughs> you like that? You having a good time right in your ears? Nope. No, no. That's How about a specific a little... fart, though. Yeah. It's still better than the other sound. It's still better. A little bit. Of... How about a little mouth noise? I know you like that. Chewing sounds. 
Oh, yeah. Good mastication going on there. <laughs> mastication. No? no? Is that still better? Yeah. Is that still better? Yeah. Right, how, about, how, how, about, how about this clip of Trump saying China? China. How's that? <laughs> How's that, that was sound not for you? China. Can, that's Can we why keep is it that? like why no, it does it sounds like someone doing a Michael it. Jackson China. impersonation. <laughs> we should keep that on the board for every time. Sounds like says Cartman. China. Yeah. If anyone okay. ever says China in the comic book or when we if you and I say it, we should China. Play. Yeah, we should play that. <laughs> I got him on there. So all right. So those are our new gross sounds, at least for mm -hmm. the time being. What? You can't. You handle removed that? one. China. Oh, China. China. You pick <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to sound like the creepy marshmallow from Homestar Runner. Yeah. Oh, Marshy. Marshy. I have no Stag idea. What are you guys talking about? Stag creepy Stag marshmallow. I can write a song called Stag Stag <laughs> You have to go in a deep dive for Homestar Runner if you're of the right age and you were on the internet at the right time. And uh, oh. go find out about Marshy the creepy marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know what I'm doing later. Yeah. He's a great. He's great. I love that guy. Uh. Um, so anyway, yeah. Gross sounds... There's one other thing I wanted to hit. Uh, last episode, we also talked about our childhood uh, teddy bears, and we talked about my uh, we talked about my uh, gorilla bird that I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, which which uh, Mike uh, categorized as an abomination. <laughs> and <laughs> Shay helped me, and we actually went searching, and we found him. Kind of, we found oh, some pictures. Good. So Mike we found was not wrong. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll put this up on the video. So if you're uh, watching on Spotify or YouTube, you can see uh, this and you can see if we agree. I've got a couple pictures here. So there were small versions and big versions and different colored versions. I couldn't find the big version in the color that I had, but I found them separately. So I'll show you. I'll show you the little version. This is this is what he looked. This is the, the right color. That is not what uh, I thought it was going to look like. No. And this it will. I'll show you. This is what he actually was. Only he was the brown color instead so he looked like this uh so he's like a fuzzy penguin it's like a worry they call it like a worry bird or something like that and he oh is a, that is not what i thought it was gonna look like what were you expecting like kind of like a monkey like a uh, like a you know a monkey and with a beak with well, like a toucan beak though right you know he's like he's like a he has kind of a gorilla's body but he's got a cone head and you're right he smokes and he smokes, and he's got a cigar, and he's got a hole in his beak. He doesn't have a cigar. Oh, uh, he's uh, got a pipe. I keep calling it a cigar. Yeah. Uh, you're supposed to know a... the differences between those things now. That that was made illegal. Yeah, smoking is gross. That is a crime now, punishable by death, Shay. Yeah, you can't be smoking anymore. I ordered a Zima, not emphysema, as the Simpsons once said. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, this was what I clung to at night. Uh, he was uh, probably about 18 inches tall, and he's like a triangular-shaped bird, but he's got long gorilla arms and gorilla fingers and a beak, and uh, he's holding a pipe that you could stick in a hole in his beak so that he could uh, smoke his pipe, and that's what, I, that's what I sidled up to as a kid. How hard were the, the plastic parts? They were pretty hard. I seem that, to that's what you pretty... slept with? You slept with this hard plastic? Yeah, yeah. I can't be I mean, good. <laughs> do you want to see mine? Yes. Oh, you got I yours? Have my, yeah, I've got Kitty right next yeah, you, to me. Okay. You we'll, still we'll, have it? I, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we will uh, we'll, we'll put my, this on the... My dad made me burn video. it when I got bad grades. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nice. I'm kidding. Oh. Because <laughs> uh, I would have believed it. That's where we are. <laughs> <laughs> no. We'll, uh, yeah, sh Fuck. show Show Kitty. Show Kitty. And I will uh, show that kitty. And so, as you know, as you'll notice, and again, we'll put some pictures up. Kitty uh, has seen some days. Kitty does not look how Kitty used to look because I believe Kitty was in the washing machine a bunch of times as a kid. No, this happened after one time. It's since been in the washing machine multiple times. Yeah. But this this look, this this appearance is after one time. Kitty was a floofy kitty and now uh, matted fur. So uh, matted. Hates ex hates his own existence. Praise no, he does not. You take that back. <laughs> what? What? You just fucking a take it back. No, he's doing his best. No, you take it back. He is a happy boy. <laughs> We're not moving forward. Take it back. When we as kids love our stuffed animals, do you think like we give it a little soul? Yes. And that's why we're able to love it so much. Yes. Like an and actual... James just insulted my baby soul. No, like Kitty and the, I are doing a bit through like uh, the cre just by like 
loving your stuffed animal, all mm-hmm. that emotion and energy has got to go somewhere, right? I guess. And you think that that becomes a soul? You yeah, are maybe, high. maybe. Like I almost played the I almost played the sound effect earlier, but I thought it was a little too obvious that Mike was toking up. He was bonging up over there. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe that is what a soul is. Maybe a yeah. soil a soul is a is a child's laughter. Yeah, maybe. You know? Um, so yeah, that was, that was our, that was our childhoods. Uh, we should probably talk about this comic. We should probably talk about this comic and why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's Jay Miller's birthday. So happy birthday, Jay Miller. Happy Happy birthday, birthday, Jay Jay Miller. And, uh, if, yeah, if you've enjoyed the, uh, goofy, uh, cartoony dark side that you've seen on our logo and that we've put into various other scenarios over the years, that's from Jay. Mm Mm-hmm. He sent us a bunch of great art over the years and, uh. He may have changed dark side just enough for us not to get sued. (laughs) <laughs> you, you, yeah. Much appreciated. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, I, I can't think of a bigger waste of talent than um, using your actual skills to make logos for this fucking podcast. But hey, I'll take it. I, I'll I'll take it. Yeah, I disagree, it's and it's amazing, and you should I'll keep doing it. it. It it'll help you go to heaven. Yeah, d- seriously, and I've said this before. Keep sending us stuff, even if you're not talented. We'll just say you are. Like Jay's an exception. Jay's actually talented, but it doesn't matter. You will say you are. We'll. Tell everybody that you're a, a gifted artist. You're going to give everyone a complex. Yeah, whatever. And uh, everyone's going to give me a subscribe. There you go. That's a, that's like a, that's a uh, like fair trade. Won, you won the day with that. Yeah, that's all I need. Today's book is Godzilla versus Charles Barkley. Yeah. So this uh, came about as a tie-in from Dark Horse Comics, by the way, which was maybe the first time we looked at Dark Horse Comics. I don't know. It's quite possible. It, it's... I don't know really what, because I read Dark Horse Comics as a kid, but I really don't know what their identity is, because it seemed like they did licensed stuff, they did adult stuff, they did they were kind of all over the map. Uh, I read I only I only knew about Dark Horse from just reading Hellboy comics. Hellboy, The Mask. Yeah, Mask. Read the Mask. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this would set you back two dollars and ninety five cents back in nineteen ninety three. Mm-hmm. But they're paying their book. writers. They were paying their writer. Probably they probably were. They're probably getting a, a decent rate. Uh, and the writer. There's a, there's a weird issue with the writing credits here. Um, uh, we'll get to that in okay. <laughs> Sorry, I saw I, I I caught what you were talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah. I don't think Mike caught it. I don't no. think Mike caught it. No. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a minute. We got to uh, dissect so, this cover, though. To, to give some context as to why this is even happening is in 1993, uh, Nike put out a 30-second commercial for Charles Barkley. Uh, Charles Because Charles Barkley had like a new shoe line or he was their new guy or whatever, and, and they decided, hey, how about we have a commercial where he plays basketball against Godzilla? And uh, they did it, and it was a big smash deal for I, some I reason. remember it. I do I not. Really, well, you should go check it. It's not, I don't think it's really all that impressive in retrospect. It was at the time, I guess. I was surprised because I kind of assumed there was like a nine-minute full movie version no, of it somewhere. No, it's just there's a not. short thing. It's just a 30-second commercial. That's all there is. Yeah. So weird. Things were so much more innocent back then. I guess. Well, you say Uh, that, but it looks like fucking Godzilla is vomiting jizz at Charles Barkley. He's got Spider-Man webs. Coming out of his mouth. Yeah. And he's been doing just fine. This was because they couldn't, they probably didn't want to have it look like fire or bile. So they're just like, just, just paint it white so it looks like water. But no, yeah. that, that shit's that shit's toxic. Yeah, Mark was like, he's spitting at me. Yeah, because he because he wouldn't swish. He that's right. It's, all it's, that's where the swish comes from. Oh yep. God, Godzilla! Godzilla's poisoning our children mm-hmm. in, in 1989. Oh, fluoride comes from Godzilla. That's right, yep. dude. Yep. Like fluoride. <laughs> and when we run out of when we run out of that Godzilla fluoride, we're all that's, fucked. That's not jizz. It's fluoride. James, you accuse me of saying high things. That's the highest thing I'm probably gonna say. <laughs> Shay saying fluoride comes from Godzilla. And I go, that's right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Shay's probably pretty baked herself. I've been sober all day. I don't know what happened. Good on you. So yeah, Charles Barkley. Apparently, Shay doesn't know the difference between Charles Barkley and Shaq. I was about to admit that. Yeah. Shay so, thinks all athletes look alike. No. That's if you a dark size couch shirt. All athletes look alike. They well, they kind they kind of do with their muscles. Yeah, they're so gross. Big. big muscles. Stupid. Every time I've thought of something in my head mm-hmm. that I thought was attributed to Charles Barkley, mm-hmm. like James's book, Shaq Track Attack. It has been Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. yeah. And I don't They're know similar. if I know what Charles Barkley has actually done because of that. He played for the Phoenix Suns. It, yep. Did not which know that. Which we've established is Krypton's favorite team. They mm-hmm. love Suns. They love they the Suns. Oh. Big fan. 
Uh, I, I know. So Charles Barkley is an NBA basketball player who, like, if you make it to the NBA, you're a great basketball player. Right. But he just talked so much shit and, like, yeah, he, did. he beat people up. Like, he was famous for that. He was famous for being Charles Barkley. Okay. Yeah, he, he was pretty, he was a little Barkley. He was very Barkley. Was yeah. he in Space Jam? Yes. I think he had a cameo. I think he had a cameo in it. In, in it. Yeah, he is uh, talked about running for uh, governor of Alabama. I'll vote for him. Let's go. Hasn't happened. This was like years ago, and then I think nah, he kind of lost on, interest. Barkley. In it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's building a base. Yes, <laughs> he's gonna get. He's gonna get it going. Another decade or so. Well, he's like sixty. So yeah. I, I think. So it, he's got another fifteen yet. years before he has to start running for office. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Leo, nice long, uh, a long track for that. Notice who gets top billing here. Godzilla, yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla right. yeah. King of the Monsters. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that was a debate. I wonder yeah, if he was probably. very adamant that, like, no, it's supposed to be, it should be Barkley versus Godzilla. Well, I mean, Barkley guys shoot money. Yeah, he did. He, I, mean, I, don't think he, I, I doubt they even told him they were making a comic. Yeah, Godzilla didn't get paid shit for this. No, he's not they real. trotted him out. Things that aren't real don't make money. Well, I, I mean, I'm... He just got his day rate. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm looking at him. I mean, he's uh, Godzilla minus one just won an Oscar. Godzilla minus one is a movie. Uh huh. Okay, and it just That's... won an Oscar for what? For like costumes or something or set design? Well, good for that thing I'd never heard of before. Isn't that weird? They're still making them, <laughs> still cranking <laughs> them out, still making them, and they're winning awards. Like they're winning Academy Awards. This came out in 1993, and it's written by our boy Mike Barron. Yeah, hey, like, all right. That's like two. how many in a row is, is that? Two in, a, two. two in a row, but three over the past like six episodes. Although in fairness, Man, they all, they're all very different, so they give him credit for that. The, the wheel likes Mike Barron stuff, and I guess our, our people, people enjoy the show who request comics enjoy also Mike Barron. Uh, there's another one on the wheel, so it could come up again. There's yeah, a great. Punisher, yeah. Uh, art great. by oh, Jeff. That would be so sweet. <laughs> we'll see. Art by Jeff Butler and Keith Aiken. But here's the deal. Here's the weird thing is that there's actually another credit. Mike Barron is credited with the script, but the plot is credited to Alan Smithy. Oh, good old Alan Smithy. All right, who's that? So Alan Smithy is a fake name that the Directors Guild used to... It's not really used anymore, but back in the day... If a director was so embarrassed or ashamed or unhappy with the movie they were making, they could ask the DGA to put Alan Smithy on in place of their name so they weren't associated with it. Oh, I see. It's like using John Doe. When you see that, and, and again, they don't really use it anymore because the cat's out of the bag, everybody kind of knows about it, but... The idea was, you know, now if you if you were kind of in the know, you see that name, you go, oh, this is a piece of shit that somebody wanted to be disassociated from. But that's in Hollywood. This is a comic book. And so I don't know if this was somebody just being cheeky or if there really was somebody involved with this book that said, no, no, man, like, let's let's not put my name on this. I don't know. This is a very dumb plot. This is an incredibly, incredibly dumb plot. Well, how so? I guess we'll find out. You know, I think at the Alan Smithy thing, I think that I think that's I, Mike. Barron. Well, I was gonna say I fun. wouldn't want this attributed to me in terms I think, of I, plot. I think, this, I think this is Mike Barron being funny, like letting people know that he, he's aware that this is a piece of shit. Yeah, well, you know, we've talked to like uh, whether or not his more conservative leanings are legitimate, or if he just d does it to get by. But this is definitely something he did just to get by. Uh, I don't know. If so, if I was a comic book writer and someone asked me if I was willing to write Godzilla versus Charles Barkley, I'd be like, absolutely. They don't say, do you want to write Godzilla versus Char Charles Barkley? They say, do you want to write uh, a tie-in for this commercial within these very specific boundaries that we're going to set out for you? Here are a bunch of thousands of dollars. Yes, that's oh, what I'd be thinking. Please. That's the part you're not saying, James. I don't think he made thousands of dollars for this comic book. He might have. Yeah. I mean, uh, Nike's fit in the bill, right? Uh, I don't know. I guess. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it has to be coming from Nike. But well, I mean, they own the commercial, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. Their logo's on the cover. Mm -hmm. Their lo We're all we all agree that Nike is affiliated with this comic book. Right. We're in agreement. We're in agreement. The art is actually pretty decent, I have to say, mm -hmm. for the most part, with with the exception of some weird hands and things. The art is is actually fairly it's made by AI. Yeah, it does look a little AI. -y. It does have a little bit yeah, of yeah, yeah. Uh, You guys are dumb. That's fun. I like that. <laughs> so we open up. In the commercial, this takes place in Tokyo, but here they moved it to California. 
It's more plausible because Charles Barkley is, lives in America. Or, or he's fought uh, Godzilla twice. That could have happened. What if they went, the, went over the script of Charles Barkley and he's reading it and he's in Japan? He goes, I'm not going to Japan. And they're like, no. No, it's just in the story. You're not actually going to Japan. It's but I don't want to go to Japan. Because I ain't going. I'm going to be in California. They're like, oh, uh, all right. They had to change the plot because he didn't understand how fiction works. I think what they did was is they moved it to California because they didn't want to have the uh, sideways triangles around all the uh, the word bubbles. Yeah, yeah. To let the, you know, it was it was Japanese. Well, we and call English. them carrots. Si I like that you call them sideways triangles, though. Yeah, sideways triangles. Sideways triangles, even though they only have two sides. Well, I didn't know what else to call them. Arrows. Well, carrots. I didn't. Well, they don't like carrots have bottoms too. Uh, all right. Uh, sure. There's sideways <laughs> arrows. There's sideways arrows to make it a little easier. They're stealth uh, bombers. Those little stealth bombers on the side of the, the word bubbles. Well, there's a lot of weird things going on in Asia. China. China. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it still well, does not sound like him. Uh, are you doubting the president? China. <laughs> I um, need, God, what? I just. You're not. It's so marshy. Sorry, I'm just creeped out because it's so marshy. Not not grossed out, just creeped out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's that's fun. Our, shit, that's our president. <laughs> it's <laughs> China. Well, it's, it's fun because it's, you know, uh, you have to edit this later. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm just hitting as many buttons as I can. Um, yeah, I'll probably vote for president. Um, I'll vote you know, for president. <laughs> I'll, I'll, vote for, I'll vote for someone. Barkley, maybe. I don't know. Godzilla. Both of these are great uh, candidates. Mike mm -hmm. Barron, Alan Smithy. I'll vote for any of them. Mm -hmm. I love all these RFK guys. Jr. because everyone seems to get mad when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and that's how it. you should base your vote. That is a hundred percent how I. That is how vote. that is how you should have a based vote, Shay. That's right. You so, vote for whoever everybody else is. Mad. <laughs> if everyone is mad at who you're saying, then that's the person to vote for. The fuck? <laughs> Maybe we'll get lucky, and your vote is vital. We'll come up on the wheel next time, and we can Wouldn't really that be nice. Yeah, this and it will become a rally for RFK Jr. <laughs> <laughs> We'll record at our FK Jr. Your, rally. your vote is vital when voting independent. All right. All right. So in this story. AKA libertarian. In this story, there's a, a ship. It's a, a Japanese ship, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're sailing close to California. And they're a sailing ship. They're like a, they're like a shipping vessel that's bringing cars. They're, are they bringing cars? Oh, yeah, it took, it took me like three readings of the page before I was able to put that together. So they but don't Mike tell you right. yet. You have to wait for Godzilla to destroy the boat, and then there's a bunch of cars everywhere. Yeah. Huh. It's, it's funny because as Godzilla is uh, threatening to attack, or they think he might be attacking, one of the crewmen says, like, oh, that might be Godzilla. And this guy goes, silence, it's bad luck to even mention his name. We're modern men. We do not believe in the old legends. But... You just said a second ago it's bad luck to even mention his name, so it kind of seems like you do. And he also said, like, my father saw him. Like, I saw yeah. a legend. His dad saw Godzilla. I witnessed this shit. That, like, like Japan was devastated by Godzilla, like, in, in less than a generation. I mean, you yeah. don't know if his dad was a liar. That entire generation was a well, liar. Clearly, Actually, he wasn't. Yeah, we've got a lot of generations that are just liars, but no, this time they were telling the truth because what do you know? Godzilla shows up and he rips this whole ship in half. And there's cars falling off. Yeah, there are cars flying all over so the place. So I just assumed they were bringing in cars, but they didn't yeah. need to add the cars at all. It's just it just adds in a confusing. I guess it looks cool, all these cars raining down. You know, like if they were drawing yeah. this, they're just like, hey, add some cars. They go, why? Because they're shipping cars. Like, is that necessary for the plot? He's like, no. And it looks like a bridge has been broken. What if he just learned how to draw cars? Vroom, vroom. He realized he wasn't going to get cars. enough opportunities to draw cars in this. Con what if he just thought to himself, I really like cars. Can yeah. I draw cars in it? They go, well, yeah, you can. He goes, yeah. What if the guy was a car and he just really <laughs> wanted to represent his people? That's like why 40% of the people get into comics is like fast cars. Mm -hmm. They vroom, learned vroom. how to draw cars that when they were young and they just wanted to like, you know what? This is my career. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing that they, those artists like to draw is sexy babes and hunky dudes mm -hmm. uh, as we flash like over to the well. beach. Yeah, we flash over to the beach and we meet our, our but star. We got, we got yeah. some good Nike placement again. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's wearing Nikes. We've got this kid, Matthew, and he's uh, dragging his uh, grandfather along uh, who can't walk very fast because of the arthritis, probably. 
and uh, they're going to go see Charles Barkley, who's making an appearance. All right, I'm sorry, this is off topic. But speaking of sexy babes and dudes and whatnot, sure. you, know, you think that's what, like, you think when people look back and they think, wow, the Jim Lee run of X Men, you know, because it's like one of the best selling comic books of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, is that all that was, though? Was just like Jim Lee hypersexualizing his characters and teenage boys buying the comics? You know, I haven't read those, those books in so long, but yeah, probably. Like it feels like that now. Now that I look back on yeah. it all, I don't I'm know like, if they really oh, they got aged. Me. Yeah, they probably didn't age super well after all this time. I can't imagine, but you know, people swear by him. I mean, that was the entire '90s speculator boom. Like I remember, uh, you know, Evangeline and 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 uh, Witchblade and yeah, Lady number Death. Ones. They purposely yeah. made more number ones because it meant that collectors would try to buy it. If Hell we yeah. have some some listeners who are were a bit more adult in the 90s if they can let us know if they also read the sexy lady comics mm. yeah how good were those sexy lady comics yeah were they actually any good or were you just a horny child <laughs> was Alan Moore writing sexy lady comics in the 90s i don't seem to recall that but yeah he's he's never not been like there's yes. always he's he's always got one in the furnace so as they're going to the uh, the beach to, to see Charles Barkley, they're passing by, you know, sexy dames and hunky dudes. And mm -hmm. there's a uh, ripped Conan O'Brien walking by. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> Looking nice yeah. there. That's a lot of work, man. That does look exactly like Conan O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. That's ripped Conan. Yeah, you can't get that, especially if you're really tall. Like, that's yeah. what I've, I've learned. And, like, the taller you are, you, you, you can't get that kind no, of No, you don't want to. No, no. That's so, like you're not meant to hand. You're not meant to carry all that around all the time. It's just too much work. Too much fucking work, man. I've been life. in a workout slump lately. I have been fucking over it. Yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta get back into it. Get your beginner gains like, all over again. The entire oh, my cycle. newbie gains. Mm. Fuck yeah, yeah, dude, that's the those. best part. Yeah. yeah. It so, also uh, encourages you to continue. It does, and then you uh, get diminishing returns, and you never see any gains again. Oh, I'm happy with that. This that first gains. Once I hit beginners. that point, I'm good. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll just I'll just maintain this. So uh, they're making their way down to shoot. I guess they were shooting. A, I don't know what they were shooting with Charles Barkley, but something on the beach. It looks like they were just like, like making a commercial about Charles Barkley talking to people. Yeah, just having a good time on the beach. Sure. I'm Charles Barkley, and I'm here with these people, and that's it. It just like the camera is just on him with the people behind him, and he's just dead eyed. Mm -hmm. Well, and the people he's talking with are fucking freaks. Look at this crowd. Yeah, there's there's some sort of uh, angry uh, warlord witch guy in the back. Uh, uh, he looks like uh, Matt Pike from High on Fire. I'll, okay. I'll I'll compare the. You guys don't know, but nope. Like when I compare the two on the video, they'll know. I will see. I will see. And then there looks like some sort of like child version of mike tyson yes yeah, this mike tyson jr oh Holding yeah that cards like absolutely does look like mike tyson dude he's gonna kill that youtuber that jake paul <laughs> guy who challenged him to a fight mike tyson's gonna tear his head off like are you mike kidding tyson's me gonna fight again dude mike tyson got is getting paid like millions of dollars to fight jake paul that youtube guy the youtube boxer dude mike tyson's gonna like okay like all joking aside like yeah all right fight these these has-been boxers but like no you don't fight mike tyson he's like the he's a killer like he's gonna kill yeah. this guy he is literally a psychopath dude he's 60 years old and he's gonna murder this this <laughs> child who's like he's, 40 years younger than he is he's gonna he's tear his head clean off maybe he's getting maniac. paid to take a little bit of a fall well i mean chan i mean uh, most likely that's all that jake paul's opponents were paid to take a fall but would tyson do that i don't know no tyson got would, some integrity he, he would tell him yeah and take the money <laughs> and then, and then kill yeah. him in the ring i was about to yeah. say he would yes and that shit and then still Jay do would. it he's gonna like because they're gonna be building the fight so they're gonna be talking shit to each other back and forth Mike Tyson is going to forget that they're just trying to build heat for the fight, and he's going to mm -hmm. take some shit personally, and he's going to kill Jake Paul in that ring. <laughs> yeah, he might literally uh, murder a man. Do you guys ever watch Mike Tyson Mysteries? <laughs> yeah. No, like that cartoon? There's Tyson a scene in there where Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald as the pigeon is going like, hey, sometimes I forget that uh, that's Mike Tyson. Like, he'll kill us. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah. He's a madman. All right, all right. So uh, Matthew's trying to get uh, up to the front of the line to talk to Tar Charles Barkley. He doesn't really make any sort of case about why he needs to talk yeah. to Charles Barkley, but he's very he adamant is, that he He's has just to. being very entitled. He's, yeah, you know what? He needs to check his privilege on this. He has he no does. right to talk to Charles Barkley. He explains it's because he's Barkley's 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 Great. biggest fan. He might be, though. Yeah, he might be. Nobody really checked it. I imagine if you are Barkley's biggest fan and he won't see you, I can imagine that being really frustrating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
So like would, uh, before we go away too far, uh, so in the uh, top right panel we're at right now, look at the size of that dude's dick. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Like the guy in the purple pants? Yeah. Yeah, dude, he is. Holy jeez. Bulging for miles. <laughs> Good for you. Well, well, in fairness, also, also, the more you hike your pants up, the bigger that bulge becomes. That so guy he's... went to work knowing his dick was popping out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, again, he he's hiking it, too. Like, the pants are high, high-waisted pants. What if, like, uh, they were drawing this, and he goes, I'm going to give this guy a big dick. Fuck this comic. Yeah, and then you got this other dude who's kind of eyeballing it and playing a little pocket pool while he watches. He's like, nice. holy jeez. Holy shit. I'll be back in a minute. I got to go to the latrine. Just distracted. Yeah. What if the kid's just like, I need to talk to Charles Brockley. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs smack into it. Uh, <laughs> Knocks him out. <laughs> like a brick wall. Like like Wile e. Coyote running into a brick wall. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I want to point out, so the kid gets shot, like shoot away. And then the yeah. kid goes back to the grandpa. The grandpa says, oh, what's wrong? And the kid's like, they acted like I was John Hinckley or something. Oh, this a comic, weird this, I was about to say, this kid is maybe, let's say 13. Yeah, this Let's say unhinged. maybe 13. And this is 1993. And John Hinckley was in yeah. 1981. Yeah. So this kid is referencing something that happened that was what? At maximum four years old? So uh, he is going to California. So the school system was probably really good back then. Yeah, yeah, he's very, just very educated. Wait, check my math there. I think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think it would be like zero at the time. I, okay. I don't know why you came up with a four, but regardless. I, I that is the, but it, from his perspective, that's the last time someone tried to kill the president. And maybe he's just a big fan of John Hinckley. I mean, aren't we all? They act like I was my hero, John Hinckley, or something. Go buy I mean, that album. is the last time somebody tried to kill a president. <laughs> he got out of jail and like, wrote an album. But it's not the last time somebody tried to kill a vice president. Nope. Oh, we, yeah, because we... it's yeah, January 6th. That, did, yeah. that doesn't count. That doesn't count. We, no, that doesn't count. I was a psyop. I don't believe that. Uh, based Mike Pence. Went to work anyway. <laughs> we, <laughs> he, and I, he and I may never agree on anything else, but him saying, like, you know what? You, when you believe in something, it's, it's really easy to believe in it when nobody's threatening you. But when people are actually threatening to hang you, that's the time you really need to dig your heels in on your shit. And he did it. Yeah, well, he was probably in on it. <laughs> yeah, he probably got a little something for it. Like, a little taste. Uh, you know, the CIA is just like, hey, we're going to make you look great. Just stay at work. But nothing's going to happen. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. So anyway, his grandpa uh, tells him like, all right, well, here's the deal. Apparently his grandpa had some career as a as a as a pitcher. In yeah, some, it, well, kind of we don't know it. because the, yeah. we don't know what he the New York elite is. Uh, yeah, it's probably he, a minor league team. Yeah, he pitched or a no school. hitter against a against yeah, the, or school. Yeah. And he yeah. says he's uh, he was able to do it because he had a magic silver dollar. Yeah, he mentions, I have a magic silver dollar. It has magical properties. Kind of covered by calling it a magic silver dollar. Yeah. Yeah, then, idiot. Yeah, you fucking moron. Uh, so, yeah, he says this magic silver dollar is why he won. Uh, he pitched a no-hitter against some, some shitty team way back in the day. He I'm also like, no, calls it the Morgan in some way. He says that their Morgan, the Morgan is special. Well, yeah, let's look up uh, what Morgan means. Well, it, it's explained in a couple pages. What's the term for a coin collector? It's a, what's that term? I don't uh, know. Nerd? Coin Nerd. collector. <laughs> Fuck you. Coins are awesome. Uh, coins are trains. Coin collector. coin collector is called a uh, numismatist? No, that can't be right. Numismatist. Yeah, Numismatist. Numismatist. Oh, look at Shay being smart. That ain't, that can't be right. That ain't Shades, right. Yeah, no, you're thinking a coin boy. That's yeah, what you were thinking boy. of. Uh, all right. Anyway, so yeah, there's uh, they're, they're walking away, and he's flipping this coin they just stole from his grandpa. No, his grandpa <laughs> gave it to him because it has magical properties. Yeah, because he's a what good if that boy. was the thing that was keeping him alive? And he like gives his <laughs> grandson oh, the coin, and the magic's like his heart stops beating. And he should have died yeah. ten years ago. And he refuses to give it back because he's a psychopath like and John Hinckley. Like, well, no, the kids like the kids trying to give it back to him, but it's too late. He's already dead. <laughs> Just putting on its corpse. And just like putting his hand and like closing his hand. He goes, come on, Grandpa. <laughs> tell me more about the time you played baseball. <laughs> as, if, as if anyone has ever cared what any grandpa has ever had to say in terms of their weird rambling oh, he stories. He loves his granddad, bro. I don't want to hear anything mm -hmm. against it. Well, he's, he doesn't seem to have parents. So no, that's he probably he's just out. He's just out and no, about he, with granddad. Yeah, Mom he and dad are working. just be out hanging out. Yeah. They got to yeah. make a living for their son. Pretty sure he's an orphan. No. <laughs> His parents were probably killed by Godzilla. I'm pretty sure his grandpa kidnapped him. I think that he would have a little bit more of a PTSD reaction if he. Sometimes that stuff. Sometimes that stuff is not obvious. 
Son, it's remember subtle. that time I told you that uh, I was your grandfather? Well, let me tell you the real story. <laughs> when you were a baby, I stole you from the hospital. I was working <laughs> as a janitor. So I wanted a son of my own. A little bouncing baby boy, and now I so, got him. So we. Why do you he, sound like Bing Crosby? So, so as he's saying, he goes in, in air quotes. He goes, so we we moved to California. <laughs> Pretty quickly. <laughs> Pretty quickly to avoid the law. <laughs> well, thanks for All being right. straight with me, Granddad. No problem, son. Here's a I want, magical uh, yeah. coin. He does that in quotes. Here's a magic coin. I want to be angry with you, but you're a straight shooter. I'm going to let you off the hook. That's what happened to Ric Flair. Like, uh, he was like a like a swapped baby at a hospital. And no, he parents, was stolen. Oh. He was stolen, right? He was stolen right, by right. this lady that essentially created adoption. Wow. Dude. But she was a piece of shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Rick Flair. I would essentially crazy. like say, here, I'll take care of your baby. And then they would just like sell the baby. Dude, sell that baby. There's That's a, a great behind the bastards about it. Yeah, and she couldn't ball for shit. No. no. Terrible, <laughs> terrible baller. <laughs> Fucking what, short as hell. That's what happened to these poor Japanese sailors that are now. Uh, yeah. So they're, the they're beaching. They're washing up on the beach. Oh, thank you. <laughs> washing up is what I meant to say. <laughs> I said close beaching enough. like they're winners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, so the kid runs up, and uh, there's. By the way, oh dude, there's a buff uh, dude, lifeguard that back guy, there. That guy, he shouldn't even be out there. He should be in the gym to maintain just, all that. Just be a model. What are you doing, a lifeguard? Dude. dude. It doesn't make. I don't really I mean, understand. That's why. not dude. When I was in Hawaii, I went to Hawaii, and the lifeguards. Uh, every lifeguard there was just jacked to the gills. I don't understand. You why, went to you Hawaii. I went to Ohio like years and years and years ago. Oh my god, Mr. Rich fucking bitch mm -hmm. over here. There's a super long story behind it too, and I don't want to get into it. All right. Sweet. Yeah, we don't like to get into unrelated stories on this show. No, like uh, it'd be too it long and it'd be focused. too personal. It's like yeah. I'm not telling that story. Yeah, we'll That's fine. We'll do a we'll do a sub podcast for that. I just wanted to <laughs> I wanted to point it out because you guys always call me rich. And I've never oh, been to Hawaii. Oh well, hell shit. Hell like, there's fuck. a whole part what of my mean? life you have no <laughs> idea that went on and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So uh, they, they just, check in on. Now all right, Shay? <laughs> now I'm just picturing uh, Danny DeVito and It's Always Sunny in the uh, flashback episode where he's just in Colombia dealing out cocaine. Yeah. For years and years and years. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've had I've worn many hats. Mm hmm. So they uh, they run up to this dude who's dying on the beach. And he says, yeah, G Godzilla's coming, by the way. You're probably going to want to evacuate the coast. He tends to destroy things. And they're and like, Godzilla's not even real. <laughs> you stupid idiot. He's like, back like, in the water. His shaky, broken arm like reaches out <laughs> to the kid goes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm also not sure how he got a black eye. Is he implying that Godzilla punched him? Uh, probably from being the, yeah. in the pressure of being in the ocean. Yeah, yeah anything yeah, could have yeah, hit him in the up. face. Yeah, a piece of that car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, that does happen. Can you Cars imagine you fall do... in the water and then the car lands on you? Ooh. Man. Well, I don't know how it would land on you. I mean, you're in well, the you water. you hit the water and the car you hits you. Yeah. I remember well. I remember hearing about uh the the rugby plane that went down that Alive was based on. Oh yeah. Where they had to like eat each other. Mm -hmm. Alive. I remember hearing <laughs> that uh <laughs> one of the guys survived the plane crash and then like slipped in snow and then just disappeared. Oh, man, Can you imagine surviving sucks. a fucking plane crash and then just slipping and dying? Yeah, that would especially, suck. Especially because he was probably the most delicious. Yeah, they he would have been. Him. Oh, he would have tasted so good. Yeah, all oh, that good man. ass meat. Yeah, when, you, when, you when you drop the best piece of chicken on the kitchen floor, hey, shit. They, they, you guys hey, are hey. wrong and disgusting. You know, even the, but because they're eating people, like they're still getting scurvy. Like, yeah, I mean, it's not a great solution. Like every yeah, they weren't super healthy when they got found, Mike. No, every, like, I, I found out, like, scurvy is like when, because, like, your scars are never truly healed, and vitamin C keeps them together, and if you don't get vitamin C, all your scars, internal and external, open up. Wow. Yeah. Dude, scurvy sounds terrible. Scurvy sounds terrible. Uh, terrible. Pretty much anything that will kill you sounds pretty terrible. Dude. Not uh, interested in any of that. No, no. Get Good your luck vitamin with C. All that. Rather die by Godzilla. Uh, uh, who's uh, no, uh, out like, of the he, ocean. He just tears open the vitamin C packets and just starts chugging it when he sees Godzilla. <laughs> so Godzilla pulls himself out of the ocean and uh, starts stomping his way onto the beach. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the kid uh, gets in. He's about to get in his car with Grandpa. He says, "No, no, 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 no." I'm going to take this silver dollar. I know that I can use this to fight Godzilla. 
Yep, and he goes, Charles Barkley! His grandpa says, uh, you aren't ready to take on Godzilla. (laughs) Yeah, like (laughs) a a couple years from now, maybe. Yeah, maybe he hasn't got the magic coin. Maybe Maybe. his grandfather was the guy who beat Godzilla last time. (laughs) Oh, somebody asked Maybe Maybe this kid likes to argue, and he just knew that it was going to start a fight if he told him no. Oh, you mean a little kid is a, is a fucking prick all the time? Yeah, that, that seems very feasible. You know, him saying, Matthew, you aren't ready to take on Godzilla does hint to the fact that the, the coin grandfather could help with, him. The, mag- yeah. the, with the, the, the grandpa with the magic coin sometime in the past like had to deal with Godzilla. Like, How yeah. else is he able to judge that? He knows something about Godzilla, sure. Man, I want the prequel to this with the grandfather. He pitches the perfect game and then has to fight Godzilla. Well, Mike Barron's been working on this for decades on the, yeah, on the prequel. I'm sure it'll be out soon. Yeah, it's going to be a tome. The best part of this comic book are the uh, sound effects that Godzilla makes. The skrunks make? and the scroots and the gronks and the yeah. flomp and the, yeah. like, it, they're wonderful. That's the best part of this. You know, speaking of that, Shay, so, like, it looks like he's not yelling out Barkley. It looks like that's yeah. like what's it's happening because he's sky. going after Barkley. Barkley! Like the yeah. Barkley's oh. theme music starts. You're right. Oh, it's like it's like a it's like the words in the Batman sixty six. It's a pow bang on a You Barkley. know what I'm saying? Like he jump, like he's he, he runs off with the coin, lands on his skateboard, he goes, Barkley. <laughs> yeah, and so he is going to he thinks that combined with this magic silver dollar, Charles Barkley can somehow beat Godzilla. And as Look. he's skateboarding, the girl next to him also thinks this comic book looks a little AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, she's yelling AI. Bravo. Yeah, that's, a, that's a visual joke. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, and also one of the other dudes is uh, exceedingly hairy. By yeah, the that's way. Danzig. Wolverine. What's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> There's Danzig. Yeah, enjoying the beach. It's James. It's James in high school. Uh, a little. That's a little bit. Well, I, I didn't have that much musculature. Oh, I had James, the hair. I was, I was gonna say James. I'd fuck you. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't looking that good yet. Uh, yeah, and the kid mentions that Charles. Barkley is Earth's greatest warrior, which is apparently a known thing. Because he beats guys up in the NBA. Well, well, this was at the time, in fairness, and, and I've seen speculation that this was a little cheeky joke because at the time, Charles Barkley was doing the I'm not a role model campaign. Like, that was his oh, whole thing. Yeah. like, I'm not a role model. And so that may have been a kind of thing of, like, you know, uh, playing it up for funsies. I don't know. Yeah. I like how I said, oh, yeah, like I knew what that was. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. You know, uh, saying I'm not a role model, that wouldn't fly today. No, well, I mean, that's what like Joe Rogan tries. It doesn't work. Like, oh, you can't fly. just yeah. You like yeah. Like, they'll, they'll they'll cancel you for shit for real. Like you know, like yeah. you you can't say that that you're not a role model. Yeah, just be like you fuck up and you do something horrible and you're like people look up to you and you're like I'm not a role model. It's like man, you're canceled. Well, it's kind <laughs> of what everybody fun. everybody wants to be uh, influential, and so you know that's. I don't know. That's that's the other like side ev- of that. It seems like everyone's an influencer now. So yeah, if you're influencing people and you call yourself one, I guess you do have to be a role model. I mean, you probably it's kind of the right thing to do if you yeah. want to be a good steward of the world. If if millions of people are paying attention to what you're saying and doing, like maybe you're not legally obligated to be a role model, but you probably should be. I mean, that's probably a good way out though. When you're Charles Barkley and you toss a guy through a window or whatever, and you're like, oh, I'm not a role model. Fuck you. Like, yeah, I guess own it. Well, in fairness, why should a basketball player be a role model? For, you're just a basketball player. You're not a leader of any sort. Like, he's, like sh- supposed be, he's supposed to be Earth's greatest warrior. I think this is because there was no UFC yet. Yeah, that's probably it. Uh, the the brief wiki review that I did uh, like five minutes ago did mention something about him saying that athletes shouldn't be role models. He's kind of right. You're supposed yeah, to be like a w- Viking when you're playing sports. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't correlate to to doing anything that's necessarily great for society. Like, how so, do you yeah. turn off that killer instinct you need to play professional sports? How do you turn mm-hmm. that off with your life? I'd imagine that's just who you become. I imagine it's who you are to get to that point in the first place. You know, it's just competitive and kind of violent. Yeah. In the 90s in Detroit, you know, that was the big time for hockey uh, in Detroit. And so... The, the Red Wings hockey team in the 90s was just, they just went over to Russia and just got a g- bunch of giant Russian dudes and put them on the team. Awesome. Good and thinking. And the team was just, the, the team was just all these giant, like, 6'4 thugs awesome. that were just bashing the hell out of people. That's how you win games, James. 
Yeah. Well, and it gets them off the streets, mm-hmm. off those off Russian Russia. streets. Yeah. And I wouldn't know anything about that because during the 90s, we had Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls, and no one cared about hockey because we were oh, winners. They throw some shade at the Bulls, actually, in this book. That's true. They yeah. shit on the Bulls a little bit. I was in Georgia both when the Braves were fucking killing it. Yeah, no, one know, no, one, no one knows any of those players. Everyone I don't know what they and... Jordan. Everyone knows the Bulls. And when the Olympics came through. I can name the players from that team because yeah. it's so ingrained in the culture. And he gave us this. Stop it. Get some help. Yep. The thing he's most famous for. That that. <laughs> Then the, the, the steak the, steakhouse. Yeah, no, no, how about no? Uh, that Hitler, McDonald's. Hitler mustache. The Hitler mustache on the airplane. McDonald's. Uh, what did he do for McDonald's? What Hitler, like iconic <laughs> look did he steal for that commercial? <laughs> uh, all right, all right. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. So we're boom, gonna continue boom, on. Boom, wham, whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop, whoosh, grunk. So, all of these uh, military military um, planes and things are attacking Godzilla, and Matthew is saying, "Ah, oh, those 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 aren't going to stop the monster." Like nope. like like he has any knowledge of this? I'm not really like, sure. Well, he's got the magic coin. Is the magic coin giving him information as we well? We don't know what it does and doesn't do. It is not clear what the magic coin does. It's not clear what Godzilla can and can't do. He can fire mm. lasers out of his mouth and destroy jets. Godzilla's size and his scale seems to change quite a bit, too. Mm-hmm. And no like, one dies. Look how that fighter pilot guy ejected. Yeah. No, oh, they explicitly really? say at one point in the comic book that there have been no fatalities. Oh, yeah, look at that, I'm sure that was clean. a note. See, what this is why... It wasn't in the boat, though. See, Mike, this is why you wouldn't have written this comic. Because you would have gotten all these notes back that you have to rewrite it so that this guy didn't die, so that nobody died, so nothing was damaged. How much like, are they paying me? I get, I, dude, it's, it's a comic book in I don't care. I don't, I can't. If, if they're paying me, like... At all? If they're paying me, like, I'm going to write it the way they want me to write it. I don't care. All right, well. Hopefully the chance will come again. Get that sequel <laughs> off the ground. All right, I'll write it. <laughs> so uh, Charles, so Charles Barkley is hanging out with his buddies, like his entourage, uh-huh. and uh, Matthew shows up, and he he does a whole uh, he goes off a ramp on a skateboard and lands in Charles Barkley's arms, which would get you sent to prison nowadays. He does a he does a somersault too, and and a guy with a ponytail is like, "Stop that kid!" Yeah, there's this whole crew around Charles Barkley that keep telling him you have to go to the Optimist Club. You have other things that you have to do. They keep mentioning the Optimists Club. Yeah, the I, think that, I think that, I think that's a trap. Yeah, this seems this like they're all, definitely they're all, sounds like it. Like they're all part of a group that wants to harm Charles Barkley, and they're trying to lead him to a place where like they're going to entrap him. They're really aggressive about it. They're I would really make me not want to go. Yeah, well, as we can see, he gets very frustrated with them. Mm-hmm. And then so, we see a, a old purple pants is giant bulge some more. <laughs> Oh, that's one of his crew. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. See, now, if I'm Charles Barkley, I'm not hiring a guy with a bigger penis than me. Yeah, but he's a lot taller. Oh, shit. Yeah, and that's, Charles that's the... can hide his penis in his basketball shorts. Yeah, he can just claim that, you know, it is, it's massive, but, you know, I have you to know, wear these bagging shorts. with the shorts. You know, I'm a basketball player. That's what I got to do. That's mm-hmm. what I got to do. Uh, so... He uh, Barkley goes over to the Matthew and he crouches down. And he says, "What's going on?" And and uh, apparently Barkley is not aware of this Godzilla issue yet. Nope, doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Does not at know all. that there's a 300 foot monster rampaging uh, just a few yards down. Uh, and so uh, he, uh, the Matthew's trying to tell him like, "No, no, no, I got this uh, this uh, coin and everything, and you got to go. You're Earth's greatest warrior or something like that, and you got to go fight Godzilla." And finally, by appealing to his ego. That's how they finally get Charles Barkley to consider it. Because up, up until this point, Barkley's kind of up his own ass to the point that he doesn't, he's not even sure if he wants to stop gorilla, Godzilla. Gorilla. Yeah. You know, like he's kind of Godzilla neutral. He can see a lot of potential good in what Godzilla might do by destroying this area. No, it's going to interfere with his game. Uh, does he have a game coming up? Mm-hmm. Or just uh, yeah, in I general? always. Or yeah. his game in general is his game. Oh, he might not be on his game anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, he considers this, and then he decides to fire his whole crew, which, mm-hmm. all right, I, I guess. They're, they're like, oh, no, our plan is ruined. Yeah, our plan to do whatever weird thing we were going to do when we got him into the Optimist Club. Right, they didn't, he didn't even fire him because he suspected anything. No, he didn't know anything was wrong. He's like, get out of here, man. This like, kid's going to help me fight Godzilla. You guys are just annoying. He didn't fire Big Dick Man. 
No, that guy stays. Oh, <laughs> that is his name, Big Dickman. And here by we the way. see uh, the the profile photo that we're going to use. <laughs> yep, that's a pretty good picture of yeah. Charles Barkley. Pretty uh, photorealistic. <laughs> oh, this so, next one's good too. Shit, it's a lot. <laughs> The the man is very charismatic. Like every every image of Charles Barkley is usable. Yeah. Okay. Well, this next page also somehow seems to support that Charles Barkley is one of those coin coin nerds. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he might be a coin boy. Because he mm-hmm. call he knows it's an eighteen eighty nine Morgan silver dollar in Hell fine yeah. condition. Uh, I bet yeah. he's just like make me look real smart in this comic book. They're like, okay, make me know about coins and stuff. You know, that's kind of unrealistic, Mr. Barkley. They're like, okay, yeah, but people think I'm real smart if I know about coins. <laughs> They're like, all right. <laughs> like, let's, just, let's just make it's, it about magic coin. Know. That's how he's able to fight Godzilla since it we got to put it in here anyway. It's just a couple panels, whatever. And, my, and Mike Barron's like, I don't care. This is going to help me pay my rent. So Charles Barkley is driving away with Matthew riding shotgun. His grandpa's gone, by the gone. way. Gone. So- gone. He's away with the stranger. So Grandpa has lost eyes on on the boy. What if they like Charles Barkley pushed the grandfather down? He's like, yeah. I got the coin now, old man. This is my grandson. <laughs> it's what this whole thing has been a scam for him to get an eighteen eighty nine Morgan silver dollar. He's like, wow, you're my new grandpa. I sure am, kid. <laughs> Charles Barkley was like twenty five years old at the time. <laughs> Dude, don't be telling Charles Barkley what he can and can't do. Yeah. He's got his sperm is just that powerful that he was able to have a grandson just that quickly. Dude, he like he looks forty though. He like yeah. like like guys back then in their twenties, like, even the the Chicago Bulls, like they didn't look like they were in their twenties. You know what? He looked forty when he was in his twenties, but he still looks forty in his sixties. Yeah. So he's you just know, be, he's always Charles Barkley. Maybe <laughs> that's not the worst. Yeah, he he was born that way. Damn, James, he's taller than you. Yeah, he's oh, like six. Oh God, James, now you have to hate six, him. Six, maybe. Yep. I do, yeah. This is why I hate basketball because every single every single person taller than me is just you got to go fight him. I mean, I'm gonna. I look. There's a long list of people who are taller than me. Not that long though. And uh, I've, they're all they're all on the enemies list for sure. They're You're all in the, the top. Like what? Like what percentage of people are over six feet tall? I don't know. Um, I'd have to check on that. I think it's like only like ten percent. It's it's very few. And then when you get to like six six or something like that. It, there's like a one in five uh, chance statistically that you're in the NBA. Like that's how yeah. rare it is. It's pretty yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's or you're cool. the great Kali and you're wrestling. Yeah. All great paths to take in life. Mm-hmm. So, Charles Barkley should have done that after his NBA career ended. Speaking of great paths, uh, they decide, or rather, Matthew decides that we have to pull over and play some b-ball before anything happens. Yep. We just got to. Mm-hmm. I'll I gotta be. play with Charles Barkley. Well, I got gotcha. you. There is really no explanation for why that happens other than it is Charles Barkley. When is this ever going to happen again? You know, you're just not going to have a chance. And so he goes, all right, uh, I'll play you for that silver dollar. You know, and, and, and if, if you win, I'll give you the silver dollar. Because you really, really want that shit. And apparently you can't buy it with your millions. And yeah, the kid I, notes, like, well, you don't care if Godzilla destroys the city, so what's a fucking matter? Good just, point. Like, I don't know, kid. I just like doing whatever random stuff comes to mind sometimes. Yeah, he's, he's living life one day at a time. What is like he wants like, to hey, do right now? He's like, "Hey, kid, I'll play it for the coin." He goes, "Okay," and he starts play, like he, he like uh, checks it, like checks him real hard, real quick, immediately, and just takes the coin from him. Just bounces yeah. the ball. He's much space. bigger than him. He's much bigger, and he separated him from his protective grandfather. Yeah, <laughs> and he just that's what class. a good bully does. And then yeah. he just leaves him. He like leaves him there with a broken nose. Charles Barkley is the real monster here. He's done a great job. Charles Barkley spinning a ball also would be a perfectly good profile for (laughs) for Dark Side's couch. Dude, in the 90s when you would do, because we saw like Super Pro and we saw Kickers Inc. in the 80s, just you combine sports and comics and it just is ridiculous for some reason. I don't know why. Look at Charles Barkley's face as he spins the ball and he says, want to take it out? (laughs) (laughs) That tells a whole story. See, it on looks its own. like he should be saying, "Stop it! Get some help." Uh, yeah, stop no, it, dude. Get some he's help. Ask, stop he's, it! Get some help. He's asking you to take your dick out at the party. Yeah. <laughs> at the party, I like that <laughs> addendum. He's there. looking at the reader, by the way. He's not he's looking like, at Matthew. No, he's looking he at you. Wants you he wants pull your you. dick out for Charles Barkley. You can't finish reading this book without your dick out. And then when you take your dick out, it goes Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that was, huh? All right. 
I was about to go to the urologist. And look, money's involved as well. Yeah, so they decide they're gonna, <laughs> they decide they're going to flip this coin to see who goes first, and uh, it lands on its side. It lands on the edge. I mm-hmm. saw this Twilight Zone. Yeah, and so Charles Barkley goes, all right, I'll give it a whirl. Flipping a coin. Who fucking says, all right, fine. But as soon as he touches the coin, he grows to gargantuan size, shoes and socks and all. Everything, including the basketball. Very important that the basketball was in his hand when this happened, when mm-hmm. his under his We don't know so how uh, coin physics worked, though, so we're just speaking ignorantly. Well, magical coin physics, sure. Sure. It's not, this isn't a typical coin. We were told that it was a magical coin with magical properties. Several times it was made very clear to us that there were magical properties involved. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. Now, all of a sudden, Charles Barkley figures, I guess I might as well fight Godzilla now that I'm as tall as him. Why not? Mm -hmm. Because this will make up for my loss to the the Bulls at the uh, NBA championships games. Make up for all the terrible things I've done. Do you think Barkley didn't want to fight Godzilla initially because he knew he'd lose? I think he didn't want to fight him initially because he knew he couldn't uh, grow to gargantuan size, and he was just a guy. I mean, really, what was the plan in this kid's mind without Charles Barkley growing to gargantuan size? What was the plan for him to stop Godzilla? He just knew the coin would help somehow. Yeah. Dude, look at Godzilla's tripec. Oh, wow. That's an interesting look. Yeah. Is that normally how he's depicted? Yeah, I don't know, but they made him swole. Yeah, so yeah, he's got two massive pecs and then another one in the middle. There's a little extra space there. Dude, look at that. That guy don't skip leg day. Oh, God, he's massive. Dude. For a giant lizard, he's pretty hot. Yeah. Like, that, relatively speaking. That tri pack. It looks like he's wearing a, 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 a scaly Speedo, and he has a giant dick. Yeah. Uh, almost as giant as that other guy. Yeah, that other guy. Purple mm-hmm. pants. Yeah, yeah. It's a... It's a Close, it's a close race. This here's my bodyguard, Purple Pants. So, speaking of funny names, we've got Janet Planet uh, from KQED News in the, in the KQED News copter flying by. Damn it, Janet Planet. Typical liberal media. Uh, gotta get in and get the scoop. And so she is, uh, she's reporting on this. Well, that's all media, though. No, 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 no. Well, all media true. has to get the scoop. Like, that's their job. No, you can just make things up. It's a yeah, lot easier. It's a lot easier to report in the news if you just make stuff up, dude. It's not, it's so thank God for AI. Yeah, just make it up news. Yeah, everything's gonna be. It's gonna be so much easier mm-hmm. to make things up. Yeah, that's how I check news in the morning. I just have the AI generate some fake news for me. <laughs> yeah, for you, and then you're like, oh, I'm glad everything's going so that well. That makes me feel good about the world. Yeah, yeah. Huh. smog is gone. It's gone. Yeah, all smog is gone. It's, what you're smelling now is not that. Nope, it's something else that's good for you. you're like, it's got well, vitamins it's- in it. If man, if that was my dad would believe it because it's on the news. He believes everything that's on. Oh the yeah, news. there's that a popular everything. there's a popular thing of like. What news is he watching? Just like local news. He doesn't have cable. He doesn't have a computer. So like whatever is on the evening news on like Channel Nine or whatever is where he's getting his information. There's a popular thing of making AI images uh, that that are kind of like boomer bait, and then just seeing if the boomers respond to it and believe it, and they always do every oh, fucking fan. time. Good, I'm and so. so glad. And so somebody finally figured, well, here's the way that we could finally get these boomers to realize that these images aren't real. And they made a series of AI images of Trump and Biden, like, hanging out like best friends or like baking a cake together and everything. And it yeah. finally got them to realize, hey, wait a minute, these might not be real. <laughs> That's what it took. It's like, so hard for them to believe that they could do stuff <laughs> and yeah. just hang out together. They're probably good friends behind the scenes. Yeah. I don't know. Take a nice vacation in uh, China. There you go. That's a good place to go. I mean, they could give us AI Godzilla and just put it on the news and tell us it's real. Yeah, I'll believe it. Whatever. I just want to be excited. Yeah, me too. I want to be. be I want to feel good again. Yeah, and that's what it takes. If it takes Godzilla rampaging through the city, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So now we finally get a big page of uh, giant Charles Barkley walking up to giant Godzilla, and -hmm. they say he's three hundred feet, but. Judging by the nearby buildings, he's nowhere near 300 feet. And he calls Godzilla a sorry suitcase-looking sucker. He uses that insult a couple times. He mentions that Godzilla's skin makes him look like a suitcase. Yeah, I mean, so he, does. he it does. It does. I guess it was kind of his big joke, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, God, so Charles Barkley decides to talk to a helicopter. He talks to the helicopter, which I imagine the vibrations from him talking to this helicopter would just knock the helicopter out no of the sky. There's no way e- either of them could hear each other. No. In fact, I assume that 
you know, Charles Barkley, when he scaled up to size, he the, the pressure would have just killed him immediately. Yeah, he would have just collapsed no, and died. He's got the power of the magic. Magic. Coin, yeah, magic. Yeah, magic. Not, not real. What so part of magic did you miss? He tells uh, Janet Planet, yeah, I'm going to challenge Godzilla to a game of b-ball in order to get him away from the city because it's a well-known fact, or a little-known fact, actually, that Godzilla is a sucker for b-ball. Uh-huh. No, he's mm. not. <laughs> That's not true at all. So, like, to get him to play, he chucks the ball at Godzilla's head. He bonks it right off his face, and Godzilla responds with a growl. Good on him. Again, great, great sound effects pretty good and then uh yeah uh godzilla torches uh, some things and shows his general destruction uh his general capacity for destruction and so and, he's like shooting his beam and and charles Barkley says you ever hear a mouthwash and uh godzilla goes oh, i am swish mm -hmm. <laughs> see he just wanted to be called swish he didn't like the name godzilla it was all like the nike I logo to... I that's had a have... that's a swoosh. Oh my oh. god, that is so close though. Yeah. That is more yeah. of those Dang crazy it. dark sides couch. Cool. Like, yeah, uh, it was coincidence. Yeah, coincidences. Well, I did. I did open this episode talking about my boy Barley, and then since then we've been talking about my other boy Barkley. Mm -hmm. So there you Ooh. go. It mm -hmm. always happens that didn't way. Didn't bring up Barbie yet. Did not bring up no. Barbie because hopefully this is for Barbie boys. Uh, swept the Oscars. I hope. Oh, uh, I don't think she. I don't, I don't know think who it won. Did. I, I just think know Godzilla won. I don't know if Barbie honestly won any. Why? Yeah. All the I other movies know. are boring. I don't know. I, yeah, there I'm not like saying I agreed movies. with it. I watched Oppenheimer. That was a snooze fest. Yeah, Oppenheimer was great. The best movie of uh, 2023 was Aquaman 2. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it came out too late in the year, though, unfortunately. So it can't be uh, eligible until next year's Oscars. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a cutoff date. That explains it. That's why. Uh, yeah, it's going to sweep. Why I wasn't there. Big, big sweep. So anyway, Barkley says, "All right, we're going to head out to the Scarf Air Force Base because I think we could probably, we could probably." He says, "I know a place that we can play." I, not no, sure why don't. he would know. A, why would you know a place? I mean, nowadays that'd be more believable because he would just check his phone. Yeah, I'll look up a place. I'll yeah. find a yeah. place. Mm -hmm. No, he apparently I knew about this uh, test facility mm -hmm. they tell all the nba players about the test facilities yeah that's the first thing they tell you and they're, they're, on, they're on a text thread <laughs> yes and so they're going to yeah they're going to an air force base and they look at the uh the, the shuttle scaffold that you know holds the the rocket as it's as it's taking off mm -hmm. and perfectly it has a it has a, essentially a basketball rim up at the top of it so <laughs> yeah why they built that in case this very scenario happens. It could Obviously. Ha Godzilla preparedness is a real thing, especially when you live on the coasts. If there's any chance that an NBA player comes across a magic coin to grow to the size of Godzilla, we must be ready. Well, they didn't know that exact scenario, but something close to it. And there was one guy like who like who the guy yelling that out is like right now in, in base and he has his arms folded and he's looking all superior to everyone else. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is sure. why we do this. We're going to provide a lot of jobs with this stupid plan. That guy's getting promoted. But you know what? It wasn't uh, the, the rim was not in position. So yep, Barkley so. still had to jump up there and wrench it down into position. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it's regulation. Now it's regulation. So, all right, they're going to have themselves a little game here. And the whole point of this was to get everybody, uh, to get Godzilla away from the city. But it seems that people are actually coming to see the competition between Godzilla and Barkley. Kind of ruining the whole point of the thing. I mean, who cares? I'm yeah. sure he'd prefer to have an audience. Luckily, Godzilla knows the rules of basketball. Well, again, he does care about the sport. He respects the game. So, uh, they begin their... Uh, I keep wanting to call it a fight. It's not really a fight. No, they're having, uh, they're having, they're playing one on one, but they, you know, they're get, they're they're fouling a little bit. Godzilla smacks Charles Barkley in the face with, with his tail. tail. What yeah, the but hell? you know, there's never That's... been a tail involved in basketball except for yeah. there's no laws. Basketball. There's nothing in the rule book that says a tail can't play basketball. You guys yeah, all know about be. donkey basketball, right? Uh, isn't that uh, I've, I've no? Let's just all say right. no. Let's just look up real quick donkey basketball. Just go ahead, because it is. It's very silly that it is. Is it when they're they're on donkeys? Like I, I I've heard I've heard of it. Yeah, they're on donkeys. Yeah, dude, they are. Dude, my school did that once. Why only once? Uh, because it's just donkeys shitting everywhere. And <laughs> guys having to ride the donkeys. 
They don't know. They're going to do what they got to do. Dude. Look at these guys. These are the kinds of people. Look, <laughs> they, like, they, that's, that's the kind of person who does this. I mean, this is you got to make your own entertainment in a small town. I guess. In a small town. <laughs> Try that in a small town. Man, that song's about donkey country basketball. Country guys are all like really proud of their small town, and, and pop punk guys want to leave their small town. But what about Springsteen? He was critical of his small town, but he was still there. No, he was pretty. He was. He had some fond memories of his town, and a small town. And then he. And now he lives 15 minutes away from where he grew up. Does like he? He, ba- he basically just went right back. He made a big point of saying, "I'm leaving this town. Fuck this." And yeah, made tremendous amounts of money, and then just moved back. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Yeah, like a was it salmon that swim back upstream to die where they were spawned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, that's, really? That's what we should mm-hmm. all do. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to Bristol. What Illinois. memory does like what part of the brain does that? I don't know the the most based one, the most uh, <laughs> melancholic solitude. The one. most Bon Jovi of them all. Yeah, yeah. the Bon Joviest. All right, so uh, they're having this game. It's uh, it's it's an even match. Mm-hmm. You know, they're very evenly matched. I didn't know Godzilla was this versatile. Mm-hmm. You would, you'd never really see him lift his arms up, so you really wouldn't think he would have the shots. But oh, he's all CGI it. now. Yeah, that's, that's sure his arms move all kinds of places. It's not just a guy in a foam suit. Now, and then we've got this big double page splash of the game, mm-hmm. and uh, Barkley's finally taking control of the game. But we've got a whole crowd that's gathered to watch. And uh, they've got signs up that says, go Charles. Yep, and they uh, had that ready to go. Matthew and his grandpa are there. But yep. if you didn't notice, there's a few celebrities in the crowd, too. Yeah, there's Jack Nicholson. There's Jack Nicholson. I don't know who this woman is. Uh, you can I don't see know. it on the video. but There's, there's, there's uh, Rush Limbaugh. I think that might be Rush Limbaugh, yeah. There, this woman has definitely got to be somebody. And then over here, you've got Oprah. And then, oh, no. Oh, Bill Cosby. Oh, Bill Cosby. I didn't, even, I didn't even notice any of this. You didn't notice any of that? No, I skipped over because I was looking at Charles Barkley's face, which also would be an excellent profile. Yeah, picture. it's it's pretty crazy. It's 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 a strange thing to see now with, with him just kind of just celebrating Bill Cosby like you want him hanging out there. Uh, maybe uh, they should use that as a profile. Picture. Well, what's weird about this, though, is this panel, they originally had a bunch more 90s people in it, but I guess... I guess, I don't know, Dark Horse saw the art and they figured it might not age well or something. So they tried to, I guess they tried to preemptively like get themselves out of trouble. They drew, they, they drew nips on that lady. Yeah, they, they did. did. They did. They did. You Thank you, that. Shay. Nips exist. Uh, but they, uh, I guess they, they edited the original art and this is actually the less problematic version. I found the original art. You're not going to believe this here. You found it? The original art. We've got no. Osama. Wow. Os- how this worked wow. out so poorly. Wow. Osama bin Laden's there. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres, Kevin Spacey, <laughs> OJ Simpson. Of course, OJ. I really do think it's time we let OJ off the hook. But yeah, they <laughs> they try to make it a little less problematic. Dang. <laughs> yeah. I like how he's Every looking time. directly at us. <laughs> Which one? They're yeah, all Osama and Kevin Spacey, especially. Kevin Spacey looks like looks like he's disappointed in us. They know they're in a comic. They can see us. Ellen, what she did was nowhere near as bad as the other ones. As far as we know. And that's that's about yeah, I'm sure they'll come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I'm just as preemptive. Wait till yeah, next we're, year. We're getting you we're getting you early. I'm, I I want to be the first person to cancel you. Uh-huh. We're going to be like uh, that comedian that outed Cosby that became yeah. went viral. Hannibal Burris. Everybody Hannibal in Burris, Chicago yeah. has a... Everybody in Chicago, because he's a Chicago guy, everybody in, I know in yeah. Chicago has like a Hannibal Burris story, including me. Oh, really? My Hannibal Burris story was I put a mic pack on him, and uh, he proceeded to go out on stage, flip around in his chair so aggressively that the mic pack flew off of his body and went across the stage and the entire production backstage was freaking out about it. Oh no. Yeah. Which by, by the way, uh, a little bit earlier, I had actually put a similar belt pack on a dancer who went out there and was like break dancing. Yeah, that, belt think, pack, that belt pack didn't go anywhere. What did they think was going to happen though? That, that they weren't going to be able to get Hannibal Burris's audio anymore. I guess. Uh, yeah. I have a, a Patton Oswald story where I just uh, pretended I didn't recognize him. Yeah, I think you've told that story before. Mm-hmm. He probably liked that. He probably gets harassed all the time. Uh, I imagine. I pretend like I don't recognize anyone. Yeah. It's... I never met Hannibal Burris, but I did see him open for Louis C.K. Oh, red. Oh, yeah. 
What was the opening? Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. That was good. We're having a good time. So the game continues, and uh, Charles Barkley is going in for a, a mighty slam dunk, and then Godzilla actually melts the ball in yeah, into Barkley's his hand. hands. Which would which would melt his hand. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. Uh, but instead, Barkley uh, just chastises Godzilla and says, there, there's no honor in, in this. Uh, you're not respecting the game. And uh, you got to get your shit together because you've got potential. This is so fucking Looney Tunes. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is so zanier than the last comic, James. And you had so okay. many issues with the last comic being zany. I think this is as mm-hmm. zany. I didn't have issues with it being zany. I had issues with it being zany relative to the Badger in general. Relative well, you know, to we other bedrooms, run adventures. into something. There's a lot yeah. of zany books and serious books. Well, so, go ahead. Here, Charles, here, Charles Barkley has another ball. Does he? Yeah. Oh, like, well, this he, is later. That's later. But he has he, another he, giant ball. Yeah, where right. did that ball come sure. from? Sure. He sized down, found a regular ball, and, and then sized, sized back, back up, up, holding yes. the ball. Yeah, oh, that's how he right. did it. All right. <laughs> that makes sense. I thought maybe that the uh, the army base where they were playing at had a spare giant ball. A just spare in case. giant ball. Yeah, they might. They might have. They set up a spare giant uh, basketball hoop for him. Mm-hmm. Yep, they did. Well, we, we get to that in a second. I do want to call out that they do shit on Chicago here. Yeah, they Try do. out with the Bulls, one of those second-rate teams. Yeah, you know, he just lost, uh, he just lost to them. Like they, they, got, they were defeated in the finals by the greatest basketball team ever. Is that the dream team? Or is the dream team the Olympics? Uh, actually, Shay, I don't know. I don't. And I, I don't know. It's so long ago. Yeah, I don't. Who cares? That was Sears Tower old. Yeah, the <laughs> past. The past doesn't matter. The past is stupid, and probably not real. Let's forget it. So they go to a canyon, and uh, Charles Barkley decides to help Godzilla train and recruit him as a potential NBA player in the future. Yeah, right. right? That'd be a good choice. It'd be a good choice, yeah, but also it keeps him occupied, keeps him away from the city. Mm-hmm. So he says, uh, you got your, they got him some size 13,000 triple E sneakers. Nice. That was the main thing holding him back. Just like those ice skates for that buffalo. Yeah, 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 but Godzilla didn't just fall straight into him. I guess Mike Barron just likes putting uh, monsters and animals in uh, footwear. I like that too. That's just the thing he's into, yeah. Uh, and so uh, Barkley tells him, like, do, do one million layups, and I'll check on you, and supposedly this should take about 100 years. He's going to be so good. He's going to be fantastic. Well, he's already pretty good, as we see from this panel labeled Godzilla Got Busy. <laughs> that should be the name of the episode. Like, he's already, yeah, sure. We'll call it Godzilla Got Busy. Who cares? Uh, yeah. That's, that's a good clickbait. <laughs> that is. He's got his shit together. Well, I mean, Charles Barkley. Who's better clickbait, Charles Barkley or Godzilla? Uh, Godzilla just won the Oscar. I, that's, I'm going to assume that this is true. Yes. Or well, Godzilla won the Oscar bit. for best visual effects. I learned that so from So then memes. we have a little epilogue, uh, and we see uh, Charles Barkley on Epstein's plane mm-hmm. having, a, having a great trip. That was the, at, back in the 90s, that was the only plane they rode on. <laughs> Wasn't a big deal. Wasn't <laughs> a big deal yet. I actually heard that Epstein, uh, in order to blackmail some people, uh, had them pose with some of the kids, not, re- not you know, the people that they're posing with didn't know that what was going on. He just wanted oh, to get pictures yeah. of them posing with kids so that he could blackmail them later. What a fucking scumbag. I Holy know. cow. But man, th- that guy had well thought out plans. Well, if you're going to do something that atrocious, you you need to really plot your steps. What do they call it a criminal deadly. mastermind? He's like kind of a criminal mastermind. He like blackmailed the people he needed to blackmail. Yeah. And I like mean, got away with it for years. Does it maybe go beyond criminal mastermind to just super villain or just Yeah, super villain. He had an island for the compound where he like entrapped rich people and influencers and politicians Jesus. and shit. Yeah, it's it's hard to even consider him like a like a human being. What an no, absolute he's, monster. Uh, uh maniacal. Yeah. Yeah. What a bastard. Yeah, well. Uh we're we're anti Epstein here. You know what? I'm glad someone took his stand. Someone now I may ruffle some feathers here. Yeah, right. But I'm gonna come right out and say it. <laughs> So anyway, so then we flash down to the uh, the streets where Matthew hangs out, and he is playing basketball with a little uh, a ginger boy, mm-hmm. a gross, gross ginger boy. Yeah, look at his face. <laughs> There's another good picture. That's my Actually, face. Actually, that's what I look like. That's what all ginger boys look like. Good lord. Yeah. Faces. Yeah. That kid also has a white tongue. 
Dude, look uh, at that kid. Ooh. Yeah, that's, he's got, that's us. He's got some kind of disease. That's yes. right, because being a ginger is a, is a terrible mutation. It's a terrible it's a disease. Boy. <laughs> and they're arguing uh, because apparently Matthew has told people that he knows Shaq and that he can swish that ball. Uh, Charles yeah. Barkley. God yeah! damn it, I got shade. I got shade right at the end there. Yeah. Seems like you're the one who can't tell the athletes apart, James. Yeah, I can't. You're athlete blind. I can't. Well, it's okay because uh, they talk about trying to make a bet with a dollar and the kid says, I don't have a dollar. And then Steve Harvey shows up with a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> he's got, the, he's got that Ch- smile. Charles Barkley uh, just got off the set of Miami Vice. Yeah, seriously. He's wearing an all white suit. He is not wearing blue, socks. There's no way. blue t-shirt. No. He made it's up a weird for, for all the scenes of him wearing his, his athletic gear with his his big socks. I think they also made him thinner than he actually is. No, he was a, always kind of a fat guy. <laughs> yeah, he's they made a him like crazy jags. Yeah. Well, let's look it up. Let's look up Charles Barkley, sure. uh, 90s NBA or something. Oh, right, donkey uh, basketball. <laughs> <laughs> How about that donkey basketball tab again? Dude, uh, donkey basketball's crazy. Let's Who see. thought of that? Mm-hmm. I mean, bored hill folk. Yeah, him with his arms stretched out, that's probably the best look of how we'll see. Well, how... and, ag- and again, as we Good said, when you're Lord, that... Lord, he's gigantic. You're gigantic. When you're that gigantic, you can't get jacked. Dude, he's gigantic. Look you at him. You just got to settle. You got to settle for just being gigantic. You forget how big Michael Jordan was, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, right. Barkley played for the Sixers after, after but the Phoenix Suns. I forgot about that. Dude, you know way too much jockey stuff about this. Uh, I watched basketball growing up, and I played mm-hmm. basketball. All right. Uh, so, Barkley shows up to uh, let this ginger kid know that uh, he actually does know Matthew. Look at the smug look on Matthew's face, by the way. Yeah. That's shitty and great. He's doing because he's farting on that ginger kid. <laughs> oh. Oh, you know, he's doing one of these? Yeah. Yep. He is. He's pointing his butt at him, his little, his little butt. <laughs> You think uh, he wouldn't need to prove it because, like, he helped Charles Barkley become gigantic and play a game of basketball with Godzilla, and everyone saw it. Nobody saw the part with him talking to Charles Barkley, though. Yeah, but you think Charles? We think when they interviewed Barkley afterwards, he'd be like, "Hell this no! Kid, this kid gave me a magic coin." Mm, or do you think he no. was just like, "I got big on my own." <laughs> he ain't telling anybody yeah, how no. that happened. I decided to become big and save America. <laughs> Does the coin count as steroids? No, because it comes from God. <laughs> yeah, he, he couldn't. He couldn't inject that coin. No, Lord knows he tried. You wouldn't inject a coin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so <laughs> Charles Barkley gives the coin uh, back to uh, Matthew, and Matthew immediately swishes the basket, and then this ginger uh, kid has to give Matthew a dollar, and yep. he's got the sorriest look on his face. Yes. <laughs> Ah, uh, and that's the story. That's how Charles that Charles Barkley takes the dollar and leaves. <laughs> well, I think I earned the dollar more than you. Well, I he probably, he'll, he'll invest it better. I don't yeah. know why I enjoy this so much, but the fact the little kid's dollar's all crumpled up mm, just makes me really happy. He's got a shitty little kid dollar. Yeah, well. exactly. I like that. <laughs> it's clearly it clearly was just wadded is. up in his pocket. Uh-huh, Fucking idiot name. kids. Shitty little kid yeah. dollar. That's a good band name. It's, Trademark. It's, it's barely even worth stealing from him. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Stupid. emotional damage is why it's worth stealing from him. Yeah, yeah. You mostly do it for the trauma. Because that kid really needs that dollar. <laughs> <laughs> his ill-fitting clothes and his like stupid white him. tongue. And Barkley showing up in his Miami Vice gear and takes his dollar. Uh, what if he take, takes it out and then says to him, I don't know nobody, and leaves? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love him. What if he goes, I hear you've been going around talking about me. He's like roughing the kid up a little bit, shaking him around. Got a lot more love for Charles Barkley. Keep your mouth shut. I got big on my own. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody anything. You I don't want to hear nothing. nothing about no coin. And he's just shaking his shoulders violently. Dude, I didn't me that say dollar. anything. Give me that magic dollar. Kids, he thinks in his head now kids with money, like the money is magic. <laughs> All kids' money is magic. You know yeah. what? We don't cover how he got small again. He's we taking find the, out. He's taking the money from kids like he's Thanos collecting the Infinity Stones. Yeah. Needs all them dollars. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the story. You know, what do we think? Uh, this was great. Happy birthday, Jay Miller. Thank you very much for asking for this. I was so excited when I saw that on Twitter. I'm like, oh, my God, I have to look for this immediately. Uh-huh. Shay, what would you think of this? 
Happy birthday, Jay. Yeah, happy birthday, Jay. <laughs> well, very political of you. Yeah. You're like you're like a little RFK Jr. Yeah, it is pretty terrible. Two out of five swishes. That's oh, a much more ex- satisfying sound. I was expecting the other swish. The swish from my childhood. Children spitting. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I know. I, I that's yeah. why I was like, how did he do that so fast? <laughs> Um, all right. Well, yeah. Happy birthday, Jay Miller. Um, mm-hmm. thanks for giving us a very clickbaity uh, book to, to, to put up. Yep. A lot better than what the wheel gives us. Jesus. Well, I don't want to speak ill of the wheel. No, uh, you're right. S- there it is. Of, <laughs> speaking of the wheel looming, uh, it does have a couple new entries. We did have a couple new, uh, requests. Let's see what I got here. We got Marvel supervillain team up number 17 requested from Landon. Oh, hey, and, Landon. Uh, hey, Landon. And uh, Born Too Late, who also made us that kick and uh, spinning wheel playlist that we'll be coming back to soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, he requested, he. I'm going to assume it's a he because, come on. Who's, who's, women, women don't want anything to do with this. Uh, some women uh, listen to the show. Do, some. We have some, do we have some cultured women who understand the value of the show? Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Oh God! Who made I mean, Nicole, me made Winona Nicole Ryder? Man. Nicole, right? Nicole. Yeah. Nicole, yeah Nicole. Nicole made the Winona Ryder's for me. But that's Jay's oh, wife, God. though. So oh my like goodness! A, a she's a she's a separate woman outside be a, of being a could wife. Could be a situation where he's just like, we're listening to this show. <laughs> this is the thing I like, and, she, and she's trying to keep her husband happy. Can we try to focus on Winona Ryder's rack, please? Though you sure can. What a lovely woman! I liked her even more when she started stealing stuff. Yeah, that was really when she came into her own. I mean, that's when she was like, damn, what an awesome lady. And then she went on that award show and she was high and started acting crazy. I love it. She was probably dealing with a lot of, like, that's probably a traumatic time for her. That sounds, I don't know, man. I made her like, made her, it just made me like her even more. And she was filming that show for kids at the same time. Yeah. Well, anyway, at any rate, Born Too Late requested uh, Animal Man number 71, which I know I've read it. I've read that entire run from the 80s and 90s. I just don't know which issue that is, but it's definitely fucking bonkers. I can say that mm-hmm. for sure. So those things are on the wheel. It might come up this time. Mm-hmm. Most likely it's going to be that Punisher, ba- uh, Mech Baron Punisher thing, though. If I, probably... have my, if I have my magic silver dollar, it will. Yeah. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff on there. (laughs) I still want, uh, there's a couple of uh, young love issues on there that I would love to come up. I would love your vote is vital, which I now remember to say properly. properly. Your vote is vital. Uh, Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Another issue of Strange Sports is on there. Do you have any Star Trek on there? Let's do some Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there he is. There I see. There's is there a little Star Trek, Trek on yeah, there? Trek, uh, right. The Star Brand, whatever the fuck that is. Mm-hmm. DP7. Mm-hmm. So it's many about, good. There's about seven DPs. Yeah, <laughs> Phase 1 phasers, all sorts of good options. And then we're just going to get some Superman shit. Yep. So it's good for us, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's not the worst. That those are consistently the Superman and Batman books are the, the highest. Uh, yeah, no, highest. no worries. Yeah, that's what people say. <laughs> Uh, this is actually, uh, listen to a little spinning music. This is from, uh, this is from Mike. This is Don Me? McLean. Don McLean Dreidel. Oh. Oh, I feel like a spinning top or a dreidel. The spinning don't stop when you leave the cradle. You just slow down. Round and around this world you go. Spinning through the lives of the people you know. We all slow down. There you go. So I risked my life to get this song to James because I use a flip phone and not a smartphone. So I was listening to the radio in my car while driving on the freeway, and I had to quickly text it to James or I was going to forget. Wow. I mean, you know you could just, like, open up a note on your phone. And, yeah, but I still have to type into that. All right, all right. I guess you could have pulled over to the side of the road safely, but no, right. No. Listen, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to question your methods. It got us content, and that's all that matters. We can spin to it. I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page. And we're going to do that right now. Let's see what it is. So many things. So antsy. Mm-hmm. It's going to be bad, isn't it? Oh! 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 Hey. Actually. Hey. All right. Unexpected. I'm- Unexpected. It's Metamorpho issue four. Mm. Uh, let's see. Was that a request or was that just something we put on there? Maybe something that's just been there for a while. Yeah, it's just on that list. Oh, oh, this is actually found by Old Comics. Oh, hey, all old right. Comics. So it's kind of. So I don't know if Old Comics actually requested it. Is that old Comics um, found this. Looks racist as shit. Sorry, Shay. Ooh, that that's what the note it. says. Um, it's from thyroid. 1966. However, Metamorpho is not a problematic character. Nope, so let's we'll take a look see. at the cover. We'll see. See what the the cover yeah, not, is. All right, nothing bad. 
It says, uh, uh, Karumba, look who's south of the border. It's Metamorph oh, from the no. Elephant, Element Man. Elephant Man. Yeah, oh, no. Bad. Oh, I see the rest of the image oh, now. Oh, no. For sure. All right, perfect. Uh, I Yeah, this isn't necessarily bad. No, no, not not yet. We'll find out. Yeah. This is make Shay uncomfortable bad, but mm-hmm. this is not Miss Liberty. We yeah, need we to don't... reformat an episode yet. Yeah, we don't legitimately do problematic books. Holy uh, shit, I mean, though. why would old comics send this to me if it was really bad? Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, Metamorpho is uh, the element man, and he is made up of, uh, he can turn his body into any element. Mm-hmm. And so he's made up of different elements on his, on his different limbs. It's a very colorful character. He's currently being played by, what is his name, Anthony Kerrigan? The guy from think. Uh, Barry. From Barry and Gotham. He's uh, shooting Superman right now as Metamorpho. Uh, Rex Mason, also a member of uh, the Terrifics, which is a, a, a book I really enjoyed by Jeff Lemire a few years ago. So. Man, how long is that Superman movie going to be? Two-ish hours. We'll see. Because it's like, the, how are they going to introduce and explain who all these people are? How, how do you, inter- like, th- you don't necessarily need to get into depth. And how, when you watch any movie, there's like 20 characters. I guess that's true. But but, but, don't have to, but usually there's regular people, and you can identify with having parents you'll, and going to school. I think we, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Like, Metamorpho is going to need a complicated origin story to figure out why he can be all the elements. Well, the Suicide Squad had a bunch of different characters oh, you're in right. there, and that worked. You're right. And, uh, it's just all in the writing. It's just, you know, it's not all necessarily going to be like Bane and Batman and Robin, you know? I mm-hmm. mean, James Gunn is good at handling multiple characters. I guess so it'll be fine i'm not worried i just want to see metamorpho yeah me too very excited all right um I mean, we yeah will. we will next time we will uh i don't think we've ever looked at metamorpho i've tried to so either because he was in the outsiders and i put an outsiders book on the wheel as well and it hasn't yeah. come up yet uh metamorpho the elephant uh, the, the yeah, elephant keep man. calling the elephant man let's call it that i'm gonna change it in all the promo art which sure. says metamorpho, metamorpho the, the elephant, elephant man. man and i'm gonna sure. give him a trunk yeah <laughs> might like as well it. Uh, that's not a problem. That's a that's a cute, wholesome one. That's not problematic at all. I like that. No, it'll be fine. So yeah, he's uh heading south of the border, and he gets into some mischief, and who knows what happens. But it was the '60s. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Me too. I'm excited. I am as well. Shay, give us some plugs. All right. Uh, you can listen to any of our episodes on any sort of podcast and find even more stuff on DarkSidesCouch.com. You can also follow Dark Sides Couch on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, YouTube. And feel free to leave comments on all of those places wishing a happy birthday to Jay and to uh, hit the Jay. like and subscribe on all of the things as well. Mm-hmm. I think you said on any sort of podcast. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You, you'll hear it when you're editing. So, uh, yeah, happy birthday, Jay. Uh, uh, let's do the Metamorpho the Elephant Man, or I can yep. just grind that joke into the dirt. Happy birthday, Metamorpho. Happy birthday, mm-hmm. Jay Miller. And happy mm-hmm. birthday to you, listener. Mm-hmm. It's probably your birthday. Or or listen to it on your birthday. Mm-hmm. You can listen to this episode on your birthday make a and note. think we're talking to you. Yeah, yeah. make a note. And it'll be nice. You're going to enjoy that. Put it in your phone as an All right. <laughs> yeah, let Google remind you to listen to this episode on your birthday. Uh-huh. You got nothing else going on. You sure don't. On your birthday, no less. Uh, anybody got any final comments? Uh, I th- realize I have to step up my b-ball game. Yeah. You're not going to be able to handle Godzilla. You mm-hmm. can't or handle I need his to wrath. Take, or I need to take more children's money. <laughs> Shay. Metamorpho Power Rangers. Ta-ta for now, Christian Crusaders. We'll talk to you next time on the couch. Because it's like my, Mighty Morph and Power Mighty Rangers. Morph, Mighty Morpho. Mighty Metamorpho Power Rangers. I should have made a joke about why Taylor Swift is so powerful because she takes children's money. <laughs> I'm sure the opportunity will come up again. Swish. Swish. Hey, it's my lunch money. I'm not paid to be a role model. Oh!